Well, as the Saints are about to go head-to-head with the Giants tonight, which means it's a Friday, this is the second Titus and Sergio Variety Hour podcast of the week. I'm Sergio Paradise, and here is a bloke who, after much speculation, has just announced that he's retiring from all official duties. It's Titus O'Reilly. What is Prince, what is Prince um, Philip? Philip. What's he actually retiring from, go, going oh, to events? Going, I don't know, snipping... You know, ribbons and <laughs> is he going to and back being all fawned it? over by idiots and you know, <laughs> I abuse, thought, <laughs> being offensive yeah, to minorities. That's what I thought. He's, <laughs> like, he's going to tone down the offensiveness now. So, yeah, so what's he going to do? That's what I thought last time. I thought he, he actually said he said I'll I'll ring Centrelink tomorrow. That won't take <laughs> long. <laughs> oh, it was exciting. I I didn't. Uh, I liked how the media just went into a massive panic about what it could massive be. Massive frenzy all afternoon. And I must admit, I was as guilty as anyone else. I was looking to see what it might be. And yeah. I saw one tweet by one guy that made me laugh. He said, he said, imagine if you'd, you fell off the perch and the entire world was doing jokes about it before it had even been announced. <laughs> <laughs> but as it turns out, nobody fell off the perch. Well, actually, for you and I, I think that's a high, highly <laughs> that's, likely. It's would be high praise. <laughs> I was actually hoping the Queen was going to announce an Oasis reunion <laughs> <laughs> to Glastonbury next year, but no, nothing much happened there. Well, um, we've been doing two consistently for a while. I think I like, we missed one, which was the shortened week. Cause of yeah, the, but most of them have been doing two. Yep. Yeah. As we promised, and that's all thanks to our supporters I know, uh, who an, are an signing up. An increasing number, and yeah, that's terrific. Up. We've, I've added the ability for people because a few people ask for it. Um, you can either support us by paying a monthly amount or you can actually just sign up for a one-off flat annual fee. An annual fee? Yeah. That means we have to keep doing it for another 12 months <laughs> so people get their money's worth. <laughs> we have to stay alive basically for the next 12 months. So, but we can't retire. Which is not a sure thing. No. The no. actuaries tell me. <laughs> um, so thank you to everyone who's become a supporter. We did it Tuesday and um, Friday this week because I had a thing on Monday so I couldn't do it. So we just adjusted by a day. Yep. Um, but we're trying to keep them on Monday and Thursdays normally. But um, I'm glad we waited, Serge. Yeah, because there's been a couple of stories broken in the last 24 oh, hours. Very exciting. Uh, and not just Prince Philip retiring. Yeah. Oh. There's bigger stories than that, you know. Uh, well, the biggest story, uh, <laughs> or maybe it's not, we just thought it was funny. We'll, we'll make it bigger. Um, the Australian Olympic shooting champion, Michael Diamond. Oh, Michael, yeah. No stranger to controversy. No stranger. That's his official title. He's been title. around for a while. I think he's won three Olympic golds, which which put, puts him to, in the upper echelon of all-time Olympians. He went to, I think he's been to something like six Olympics yeah. or something crazy. Yeah. Um, was Barcelona his first? I'm trying to I think it might have been. Might have been. been. I yeah. can't remember. But, he, yeah, he's won a few golds. Anyway, bit of trouble for him. He's been um, found guilty of firearms and drink driving offences. Yeah, um, never a good combination. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dr- driving while drunk and shooting. Yeah. <laughs> With eight shotguns in the boot. I call that weekend at the farm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, he was um, arrested in May last year in New South Wales. Yeah. Um, and he was allegedly involved in a domestic incident with his brother. Now, that's another Olympian in a fight with his brother. Yeah. Graham Hackett got in a fight with his brother too. Yeah. But, Being the brother of an Olympian. But, but you know, unlike the Hackett family, the Diamonds have guns. Yeah, I was about to say. Like, <laughs> they specialise in guns. Grant, Grant, the worst Grant can do is challenge you to a, a, a very long <laughs> swimming event. And the worst he got was a punch in the head from his brother. Oh, still, still not what you want. <laughs> with, uh, but know, anyway, he, better than a twelve gauge. That's right. Yeah. So um, he was, he he took off. He refused when he was pulled over po- by police. This is never a good move, Serge. Even yeah. if you are drunk, yeah. as someone who I often drive drunk. Yeah. I mean, I'm drunk. My chauffeur yeah, is yes, sober. Your driver is sober. Before we get letters uh, or telegraphs. Um, the police asked him to undergo a roadside breath test and he, of course, said no. No. Never no. a good move. No, because then what, what What do they do then? Do they just chuck you in the back of the van and drag you off to have it Yeah, no, they at just, the police station? Yeah, they yeah. blood test you. Yeah. Or they get a – I think it depends in the different states, but they can get either an order for you to have to do it yeah. or I think – I mean, I don't assume if you don't. Well, they it just is, assume, it's an offence to refuse one. Yeah, so yeah. you get charged. In yeah. 
So anyway, he got uh, so he they did so they then searched his car, yeah, and uh, they found a shotgun and 150 rounds of ammunition. Yeah, but see, this is where I didn't know he had that many family members. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where he probably thought he he does the old. Do you know who I am? Yeah, I'm Michael Diamond. I've won three Olympic gold medals for firing this shotgun. But yeah. Thinking that's going to get him off being pissed with 150 cartridges in the boot. Yeah. It hasn't turned out that way. No, no, it hasn't gone well at all. Um, so he was actually charged with a high range drink driving offence. So they must have either tested him at some point or yeah. uh, you get charged at the highest range, maybe, if you don't actually agree to submit to one, maybe. Uh, he got in trouble for not keeping a firearm safe. So the thing there is like, is just chucking the shotgun in the boot no longer considered safe? Or was it See, in the passenger side? I don't know. See, in my day, you know, just the handgun went straight into the glove box. What do you mean in your That's day? Safe. Still your day. <laughs> That's, That's why I always the, drive with you. I'm a bit yeah, nervous. Yeah, it's the old Glock in the glove box trick. <laughs> the old, the old gl- that old trick. Yeah. Here's, here's a tip for young punters. Yeah. Uh he was also charged with using a firearm while under the influence of alcohol. So he must have used it he's along the way. He's fired it. But you, you'd Who's have he to, fired it at? Well, you've got to give him the benefit of the this doubt. This is not what, while driving or like... Well, I don't know. I mean, the old shoddy out the window is never, you know, it was never a good idea. But you'd have to assume that he didn't fire it at his brother or anyone because he's an Olympic gold medalist. He would have shot. He would have got <laughs> he them. Wouldn't have missed. He wouldn't have missed. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, He'd be on a murder charge if he'd been threatening him about you, it. Might not. Now, because of uh, this conviction, uh, he receives a mandatory 10-year ban on firearms that will stop him owning or even using a gun. So for the next that's, 10 years, he can't touch a gun. That's the so end of his Olympic career, which well, was, was be, pretty fi- much finished anyway. He's just going to have to, you know, make the sound <laughs> of a gun while cocking his hand. That's the imaginary... That's the North Korean yeah, you know, North Olympic Korean. team. He's yeah. going to be as effective as a North Korean at, at attacking anyone. Um so there you go. That's Michael Diamond. We can scratch him off. Now, he actually missed the last Olympics in Rio. Yeah, uh, and there was some controversy because, there, Well, that there? was because he got arrested for this, but he hadn't been charged yet. So they said, you know, Kitty Chiller, she might uh, not win gold medals, but uh, she runs a tight ship. She sure does. <laughs> when it comes to shotguns and grog, Kitty, <laughs> Kitty won't have a bar of that year. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that was fun. Now, um, this also broke last night, which was... Fascinating. Yeah. Sorry, when I say broke, I mean it just was mentioned by the CEO of the Saints, so uh, it's not hardly Watergate. But St Kilda have confirmed they've got intentions to play more home and away games in Auckland, which I believe is in New Zealand, Serge. Right. You're a fan of New Zealand? No, I'm not a big fan of New Zealand. <laughs> never liked uh, New Zealand. Little Australia, I like to call it. I spent six months in New Zealand when I was 10. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Where were your fair parents? <laughs> 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 it was the old, just, just go and stand over there in Wellington. <laughs> we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in a minute. Why, why were you there? Oh, because of dad's work or something. But after six months, we came back because we hated it so much. Oh, really? What yeah. part of? Uh, Wellington. Oh, you're in Yeah, it's yeah, cold and very windy in Wellington. It is, it is. And there's, there was a school teacher there. Geez, I hope he died a rotten, painful death. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you're not bitter. No, not at all. I used to get bashed up every day. He but, used to bash you up? No, not the teacher, but all the kids did. <laughs> Oh, used to bash you up? Yeah, for being an, an Aussie. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and that went on for five months until the biggest kid in the school, this big Maori guy who was captain of the rugby team, yeah. came over there one day and said, the Aussie kid's had enough. I said, mate, you could have said mention that five <laughs> months ago. <laughs> Thanks, but, you know, yeah, you've, where gone, were you five you've gone on, you know, nothing really? about it. So you know, that's a long-winded answer to your question. No, I don't like New Zealand. Yeah, right. So uh, I won't be going Unlike to the same Unlike Adelaide game. and some of the other places, oh, oh, look, you've got a legitimate oh, reason I for I not do liking have a, New Zealand. Oh, I'll tell you, Adelaide's like Monaco compared to Wellington. <laughs> <you know. Yeah. laughs> I think that's their new tourism <laughs> slogan. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, um, well, we're getting back at New Zealand because we're sending them the Saints. The Saints, yep. Uh, again, um, Chief Executive Matt Finn has flagged that the Saints could be playing New Zealand as soon as next season. Now, this Who is, did they play against over there last time? I'm trying to remember. Oh, they played Brisbane in one game yeah. and that was horrendous. Yeah. 
And then I can't remember. Was it Geelong? Oh, no, 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 it wasn't someone that good. They always send like. The dud sides. It's always the yeah. worst. I mean, no wonder. It'll be and it's, Port and the Gold Coast or something. And yeah. Why they keep thinking this is ever going to. Uh, we can't win over Western so, so Sydney. What, what's Matt Finnis's justification or why is he oh, suggesting it's, it's going to be a good me, idea? Tell me if you want to be on what Matt Finnis is currently on. Uh, certainly, this is what he said, certainly there is a lot of enthusiasm within Auckland to play AFL football from either late 2018 or certainly 2019. Do you really think there's a lot of Where in Auckland is he getting, garnering <laughs> I mean, this information? Just, I think he's just talking to like one bloke. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's, he's met... One bloke in the pub over there, and oh yeah, no, bring your footy over here. That'd be terrific. Yeah, would love do you, you. Do you think? Do you think the Saints they'll want to play in the new underwater stadium? <laughs> that that we all mentioned earlier in the week. Yeah, yeah they try. They'll be, remind them of Moorabbin. Well, they're saying that well, fairly the, damp. The big thing here is they need to secure a stadium that's reconfigured uh, for for AFL basically because they're all union. they're all rugby fields. Yeah, they're all that's too, right. too small. So. Um, well, I personally just want to put on regular. I think that's a terrible idea, um, and that's just a loss making adventure right yeah. there. No, I mean, I guess they probably make more money there than most games that Eddie had. Well, that's. I think that's probably. <laughs> but that's their only motivation. But but to come out and say, oh no, there's a lot of people in New Zealand yeah. really want to see this. Is that why no one turns up to all the yeah, games you've no, had there? You, you're gilding it there, Matt. Um, do you think they should run past Nat Fife if he wants to play there first? <laughs> Yeah, Fife, you might want to go over there, do a bit of snowboarding after the <laughs> after the game. Uh, now, every now and then, um, a, an ex sports person comes up with an idea so clever, such genius <laughs> that we we just it takes my breath away. And this is an old mate of yours. And this who's is come one up. of them, is it? <laughs> this yeah. is one of them. This is an old mate of yours, uh, former rugby league star, and uh, this is how they described him in the paper: wealthy Sydney businessman. Now, whenever I hear Sydney businessman. Yeah, you just think crook. Yeah. <laughs> Dodgy, <laughs> Dodgy cowboy crook. Sydney. No matter what. Colourful Sydney identity. Yeah, yeah. but the Sydney businessman on its own makes me worried. But anyway, uh, former rugby league star and wealthy Sydney businessman, Benny Elias, uh, who's a, a very good... Uh, could, he's not an old mate of mine. I've met him. Yeah, I but, know. I was but just winding if you he's up. become a wealthy Sydney businessman, would imply that he's pretty sharp. And the one time I met him, he was about as sharp as a shot put. <laughs> <laughs> you met him on the the uh, what did you mean? Sale of the century. Sale of the century. Yeah, he, when he couldn't answer the simplest of questions. So how he got to be wealthy? <laughs> was it what Although is your it is, name? It is Sydney. It is Sydney. Um, anyway, well, what's he come up with anyway? Well, he's come up with a cracker of an idea. He's saying that the NRL should consider buying the struggling Channel Ten. For a hundred million dollars, which is how much he thinks it's going for, yeah. which I think is based on its you know current valuation. Current valuation but on I, the stock I, market. I don't think it's going to go for quite that. Now, this is a competitor to yours and my idea to buy Channel Ten. Yeah, we were going to crowdfund this, but I think if we wait a few years, we'd be able to get it for about five dollars, well, <laughs> not a hundred. Well, million. Benny reckons we'll pay a hundred million, but it's it's only forty if George Calabaris is writing the checks. <laughs> yeah, it's only forty right. million. <laughs> He's going to come and be the head of HR. Um, now, Elias is going to hold talks, it says, with influential NRL executives. I like how that suggests that there's, um, there's non-influential, <laughs> non-influential <laughs> executives. Uh, he, about, and he's going to um, start a push for the Games Independent Commission to begin a feasibility study into buying the flagging uh, yeah. network. He says, 10 needs rugby league. I believe it would be an absolute lifesaver for them. This is a blue chip sport and Channel 10 could attain the broadcast rights by purchasing the stadium. The station. But the station, sorry. But but haven't Channel 9 got them locked in for a fair while yet? Yeah, like six years or yeah, something. And so he did raise that that would be an issue. That would be a problem, yeah, because I don't think Channel 9 are, are quite going to hand them over. They might sell them to Channel 10, but it would be for a lot more than $100 million, Yeah, a lot I, more I would than, suggest. Yeah, that's right. You can't just... Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this, though, is if they own Channel 10, they don't get broadcast rights money because they already own it, they'd just be paying themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. seems to have a... Uh, he's talking about buying a losing... a business that lo- loses money. So let's go back to that fist. wealthy Sydney businessman <laughs> thing again. I think I'm backed up here. Uh, he hasn't thought this one through, Benny. Well, that, that's another thing. And the other thing is, though, I, that where I'm a big... I get a big tick for this idea is... How fun would be watching the NRL run a TV station? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Bondi Vet would have a different meaning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could so. 
Did you just say the, the sales manager? And the, oh. Emerging from crisis to crisis. Oh, God. It'd be terrific. Uh, they'd have their board meetings at the Ivy. You know, yeah. <laughs> in cubicles at the Ivy, like most of the NRL players do. Oh, terrific stuff. And there was another one just last night. Another uh, NRL player got busted at the Ivy yeah, for cocaine. Yeah, cocaine. What yeah. a surprise. Yeah, it's a shock. But you don't no, go hear, right ahead. You NRL don't hear many stories that feature a rugby league player, the Ivy, and cocaine, do you? No, those three are usually mutually <laughs> exclusive, aren't they? Those three things. I would have thought the police, if they wanted to, could almost arrest someone in fitting that description every night at the Ivy if they really wanted to. Oh, I think they, pro- they probably try. I mean, you know, you just hang around outside the Ivy, so... But oh, good luck to Benny on that one. But as you say, buying the network and owning the network and then running the NRL on there, you've got to pay for it and they can't pay for it. And if you own it, yeah, he hasn't thought that one through. Has not thought that one through, Benny. Well, but, also, but, it's a loss-making business and I yeah. don't necessarily think, you know, the NRL brains trust are the people that have turned around, John <laughs> Ten. <laughs> <laughs> I can't turn around their own well, sport. Well, let's get Glenn Lazarus to run MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs> More jobs for the boys. God, it would be just like, you know, 10 hours a day of Fatty Vorton. <laughs> oh, the fat, yeah. <laughs> and we run another Fatty Vorton yeah, special. Yeah, Fatty will he'll read the Matty news. Matty Johns. Yeah, Matty Johns. He, he, God, they, he could be, do the weather. Some of the uh, people in the NRL who have her on television... Yeah. Like we talk about Wayne Carey, who's, yeah. who's as bad as they get, really. But then you got some of the like Matty Johns. How does he still have a career? Fatty Vorton, Sturlo. Yeah, uh, but f- I could get Ray Warren to voice over, you know, the Biggest Loser or something. <laughs> I'd make, it a, <laughs> make it a lot more interesting. It would be like a State of Origin game. <laughs> Master Chef would suddenly have a three-hour pre-game show. See, if, if Channel Ten bought the NRL, they would still, and the NRL were running it. They, st- they still would lose the state of origin to Channel 9. <laughs> Channel 9 would be smart enough still to keep that probably. Um, a big week this week in the A-League for a few reasons. One, uh, and it slipped by unnoticed by a lot of the media outlets I see, yep. um, the A-League grand final is actually on this Sunday. This weekend, is it? <laughs> oh, I see you're right across yeah, it. Yeah, right, yeah, right across <laughs> it. No, it's Sydney FC and Melbourne, Melbourne Victory, Victory. isn't it? And uh, the thing that's uh, interesting about this is in the Melbourne papers... The Scott Pendlebury, Joel Selwood, <laughs> minorly boring, you yeah, out. minorly boring chat that they had after on the side yeah. that was has gone on has had more coverage in the A League Grand Final yeah. in this town. It's considering the victory of playing in it yeah. is quite amazing. Uh, but the game's been it's not being played in Melbourne though, is it? It's in Sydney, yeah. It's at Allianz Stadium, which, which is, is the Sydney football, Sydney old Sydney footy uh, ground yeah. near the SCG. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and. This shows you the problem the A League have a bit because, uh, unlike so Melbourne for all, for AFL for all its faults, the in state teams rightly raise its annoying toys at the MCG, the grand yeah. final, no matter what. The one thing it is, it gives them certainty. So the, the A League, because they don't know what teams are going to be in, can't really book a venue very easily. Yeah. So they're going to have it there, but there's a Waratahs game uh, just a bit before it. I think, it was oh, Friday the, I think night. it's the night before. The night before, Friday. And so basically it's going to be like a the rugby, rugby game. just chews up the... They chop it up like, like nothing else. Yeah. And it's going to be this, It's going to be back to... It's going to be like if they'd had a day in the stadium, basically. <laughs> bolts hanging out yeah, of the Yeah, it's like an agricultural show they're well, playing it on. Well, I reckon soccer's better on a crap surface. It yeah, because it, it just bounce, the ball doesn't yeah, go straight. You can't, you can't know where the bounce is. It's, it's like an obstacle course. It bikes diving <laughs> and for the course. <laughs> that's, that's how you want to see soccer played at the highest level. Well, or it's as high as it gets in Australia. Because Sydney FC have been by far the better team yeah. this year. Um, I, I think by a fair bit. Although Victory. Um, They've come out of nowhere a bit, haven't they? Oh, Victory? they sort of were around middle. Of, they were going okay for a bit and then they sort of came good and. They're, they're, they're a good side, but I think Sydney would be surprised if Sydney. Bessard Barisha. Yeah. Which team does he play for? The victory. He is the victory. Yeah, he's That's played the Brisbane Raw and he's trying right. to be. He's, he's the best player in the A-League, isn't he? Oh, some reckon it's him. Others. Um, uh, Tim Cale? No, he, more like. Um, they're the only like, two players I know. Uh, Ninkovic has been pretty good. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, for um, the 
Sydney. So, right. you know, there's plenty of good so who's, players. So who's your big tip? I think Sydney are going to win it. Yeah. What's interesting, though, is in the same week that this is all going on with the A-League final, and I think the promotion of it's been a bit pretty low. Pretty low. Because we live in one of the... Uh, so it'd be televised. Which just... is not all the A-League's fault, right? Like, it just shows that, you know, when... You know, it's kind of amusing in one way, but when Scott Penbury and Joel Selwood were having a brief irritated chat, chat after that the then game. quickly developed into like it was really nothing. Yeah. Is like the biggest story in Melbourne. For, and the thing I love is there's these stories. Stories these days just linger, but it's never because of it used to be like, you know, nine eleven, front page for <laughs> Fortnite, because it was a huge story, right? Yeah. Now you've got people it's almost two weeks after. They're still debating what you can and can't say on Anzac Day. Yeah. And it's almost two weeks since Anzac Day it's, happened. It's still even the next And there's Anzac these people Day. all making their points about it. Yeah. And you're going... Move on. The Anzacs, did, I can't imagine they fought for this. <laughs> they probably... And if you could go to someone who was actually at Gallipoli and, you know, bring them back and say, what do you think of this? They'd probably go, I just... We, we fought to get you to all stop talking. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't just fight stop talking. for your right to watch Q and A. Oh, it's just they just keep going on about it. It's like, oh, calm down, like move on. Um, and it's the same with the Scott Prendlebury Selwood stuff. So when yeah. the A League's getting sort of pushed behind that in the pecking order, yeah. for a grand when it's a grand final. So the granny this week it, it just televised on Foxtel, I presume. I think it's on SBS. Oh, SBS, of course. Yeah. So they've had a lot of the coverage. Um, now, it's in a week where there's been a bit of uh, – it's on Sunday at uh, f- yeah. 5 p.m. in Sunday evening. Um, so we should add that um, in in a week where they've got the grand final, the A-League clubs have been meeting with Football Federation Australia. This is the thing we talked to John Stenzold about where yeah, this it's – this, I mean, As you say, this is another thing that's been going on forever yeah. with, with no resolution in sight. That's right. And um, see, at least the AFL will make a knee-jerk reaction and it will be the <laughs> wrong decision, but they'll do it fast. They'll do it, yeah. They'll make it uh, – unless, unless – it's, it's a story that needs to be covered up for a year or two. <laughs> <you know? laughs> then they'll Hello, just bury Lockie it. Whitfield. Yeah, exactly. Um, although they had that rule summit, the AFL – Oh, that was the other day. The, that was a rule went, summit where they said, no, all the rules are fine, didn't they? Well, they basically came out and said, we're doing, not only are the rules fine, we're doing a terrific job. Yeah. And I'm like, is it Donald Trump running the rules committee, is it? <laughs> oh, but did, didn't Which, they say uh, um, the, um, the deliberate out of bounds, it's not actually deliberate out of bounds. Yeah. Uh, it is what... Oh, what Lack of it? intent or something. Insufficient it is. intent. In, in, yeah, yeah. So now... Now when you're at the game... I mean, how stupid is that? Now when you're at the game and somebody kicks it from the back pocket and it bounces sideways out of bounds yeah. on the wing, you don't yell deliberate now. You have to yell insufficient intent. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, I can't see Deliberate out it of bounds becomes, if you shorten it uh, just with the letters, it's doob. So you can yell like, yeah. doob. Yeah, yeah it's, you know. That could catch it, on. Yeah, let's introduce acronyms to barracking. <laughs> 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 That's right. But the thing... How crazy is it that at the, at a time where I think the average fan, you know, when yeah. you look at all the stuff on Twitter and Facebook and people I talk to and the stuff in the media and everything, the average fan at the moment thinks the intentional rule and yep. the third man up rule are both jokes. Yeah, completely ridiculous. You know, self inflicted <sighs> idiocy. And at a time when it's a and the umpiring, I think this year. I actually thought the umpiring last year's was pretty good. Like, I thought last year was better than yeah, this year. But this year has been <clears throat> abysmal. And, I mean, I don't like to bait, blame the umpires all the time because it's a hard job and I think their job has been made hard. Oh, I it's think, been made harder I don't think it's this like year, there's no fault. question. I've said it before, they're like the call centre staff. People see them and abuse them. Yeah. But they didn't make the decisions behind the stupid policies. No, that's true. Um, so how is it at a time when it's as bad as it's ever been in a way the AFL get together and go, it's all great. It's the AFL. But it's just a disconnect to... Yeah, with with their... What, what's the word these days? Stakeholders. <laughs> <laughs> so Where they are on... So what, yeah, what, I just don't know what their brand is anymore, no, Serge. No, but they're on a journey. Uh, so the AFL, the A-League met with all their clubs, or the FFA met with the A-League clubs, and uh, it's all about how much money they get, basically. Yep. And... Um, the a- the FFA thought they were offering them a bit more funding and giving them a um a, a thing that would sort of sell it. Well, the A League clubs walked out. That's always a good 
good result. Feigning yeah. injury. <laughs> they <laughs> did take, a dive. They're taking a dive, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, the FFA chairman, uh, Stephen Lowey, uh, Lowey who, who got the job as the son of the previous chairman, yeah. so it's hereditary. Son of, son of Frank. Yeah. You, you know when a position's hereditary, just got... a la Prince Philip, yeah. it's not going to go well. It, hasn't that just got soccer written all over it, though? It is a bit of it yeah. is perceived as a bit of a return to the uh, bad old days. Uh, anyway, the clubs want a greater share of the pie of the money that's coming in, um, and they're not getting it. So they walked out. Um, and Stephen Lowy, he was overseas and not even at the meeting. So that's not going to help. It's not going to help. He, they tried to Skype him in, but it was too <laughs> choppy. <laughs> so um, they just walked out on the meeting. So they can't even have a hold a meeting together at the moment. So, but, but the whole thing. They want more because the, they've got the big 57 million bucks a year broadcast deal yeah. with Fox. But the clubs are now getting about 32 mil. Yeah, so they they're saying there's 25 more. mil there yeah. in the kick. How about yeah. a bit and more? And why are you getting 25 million? Yeah. Not, why are you you know, and who gets it? I mean, how much is buddy David Gallup costing you a year? This is the same argument that, um, this is the same argument that's in the league at the moment. It's yeah. how much money goes to the, the, the clubs, the out, clubs. Of the, out of the pie. Um, now, a story that I, I this was the gr- this was a great non-story. Yeah. Uh, and if there's anyone who's great at whipping up a non-story, it's Anthony Mundine. He came out and made. We do love a great non-story. Oh though. yeah. He, he made the claim. It, it was written in the paper as his most audacious claim yet. That's well, that's a statement in itself. Yeah. Um, he says he could become. He just said this right. Yeah. He says he he could become the oldest rugby league player in Premiership history. Now, a few problems with that just on the side. <laughs> One, he's not playing rugby, rugby league. league yeah. uh, two, he said, oh, I'm still going to box for a while. Um, and, and three, there's no sign of him being anywhere near a premiership club or a premiership right. either. So there's a few things he has to sort of, yeah. he has to, you know, finish boxing, get picked up by a club, have that club actually make a premiership. So, yeah, he's, But he's, anyway, don't so let how rea- old, he doesn't let reality how old is, interfere is, is with his old. Thought. Anthony, oh, is he's like forty-two. He's in his forties. At the end of the month, so, so by the time the this month. all happens, he could be pushing fifty. Well, I think he's going to have another fight with Green yeah. to make some more money. I, mean, I think Danny Green wants to play for the Melbourne Storm after <laughs> yeah, that. That's yeah. right. So um, he's come out and said that uh, he would like to return. I think to St George Illawarra, um, and he says he could. Um, the The record so far of someone who doing it was Billy Bluey Wilson. Who you would you knew well? Who retired in 1967 <laughs> at the age of 40. Oh, you still catch bad. up with Billy? No, nah, I haven't seen Bluey for a while. Uh, he said, Mundine said, I feel that good and that useful. If I can get anywhere up to the speed of what I used to be as a youngster, that could definitely be an option. I want to do things that have never been done. I want to make it possible. Well, one thing has never been done. He's, he's, he's never been a boxed anyone of any quality. <laughs> yeah. You could do yeah, that. What are your fights? Somebody good, uh, somebody just a tomato can. So yeah. he's only been out of the game, they surge, for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> that means there are players about to be drafted. Yeah, who, who weren't. Who can't remember ever seeing Anthony Mundine play. Who weren't even born when, when he, he played. was playing. I mean, geez, Joe Watson's struggling. He was out of the game for a year. Yeah. You know? So uh, I can't see that really coming to fruition. Oh, I, do, I don't think so. I think it's safe to say. But the, the way it's going, he'll, he'll still be saying, is he, when he's 80, he'll be saying, I can still get back in the ring. Yeah. You know, he, that's the sort of bloke he is. Nah. But as I say, it is a non-story and it won't happen, but I'd like to see it. I'd like to see him try. Oh, he does. There'd be, there'd be young blokes out on the rugby league pitch who would just love to take him out. Oh. It'd, it'd be the biggest hit he's ever had. Yeah, as when he gets out there, I know. Copper Sam Boone's no, shoulder charge. Probably, or something. What club would pick him up? Oh, of course, it's absurd. It's like the recent. It was sort of a joke about getting Fev back. To, oh to, yeah, to getting Fev to Collingwood. Fev to Collingwood. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, or next year Boomer Harvey to the Giants or something. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's just what clubs need. Yeah, imagine that recruiting. He's a forty-year-old bloke. Although if any club was going to give Fev a three-year, half-million-dollar card... It'd be Collingwood, yeah. It'd be Collingwood. Um, now, Serge, this is something, talking about the umpiring earlier, um, yeah. two umpires um, went the biff in a recent game. 
This is what you like to see. Yeah. Now, an investigation has been launched, which is the, uh, you have has. to do that, into a bizarre dust-up between two umpires at a local football match. Spectators watched in disbelief as a field umpire and gold umpire had to be physically separated by other umpires other in the umpires. middle of the ground. Go on, you blokes, break it up. <laughs> I've reported you. Yeah. I've reported you. Yeah. <laughs> but what was a field umpire and what was a goal umpire? Yeah. It's what a, was the argument about? Well, it says tempers boiled over at halftime during a Riverina Football League match on the weekend and a volunteer was needed to stand in as goal umpire so the game could continue. <laughs> um, AFL Riverina is investigating the incident and has requested statements from both umpires. The league says won't comment until the probe uh, is completed. So... Uh, w- uh, Wagga's Daily Advertiser reported central umpire Rod Apted and goal umpire Dennis Rudd exchanged words in the middle of the field and then came to grips. Right, what was it over a, a, a you know, it, was it a touched? You know, did they, <laughs> you know, so you got umpire's call, you know, get stuffed. I don't know what happened there. I don't was know, it, maybe it could even be something personal, not related to the actual that, the that's game. That's what I'd like know, to like, say. Yeah. In the, you know, it is the river, you know. Could have done a yeah. Gary Lyon. <laughs> Could have. As the new term, which means he's about to get a, 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 like a, a, a an unsuccessful well... radio show. <laughs> he's going to have to be well paid to not rate. <laughs> hey, good, good luck with that, Rod. Isn't that going beautifully? Yeah. Um, I tell you what, uh, and I reckon some people listening to us would be uh, the culprits. Every time uh, that brec- uh, SEN's breakfast show yeah. put up a Facebook post. I, I like On any topic, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter. They say, you know, especially if it says Gary thinks like, you know, they yeah. should play this game here or they, and it'll be a benign comment, right? Yeah. Like he's done some stupid ones like when he said that, uh, uh, you know, you can't, shouldn't bring kids onto the ground yeah. after the AFL Women's Final and things like that. So, but even when it's just a benign comment. Like, just a, a standard footy yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But every comment almost, and yeah. there'll be like 300 of them yeah. will be, at you know what, it, Gary? Yeah, at least he didn't. <laughs> yeah. His best mates they all, misses. Or, or stick to, you know, even if, you yeah. know, he just is, he, he just can't get He's past it. He's not hiding to nothing. It's just the comments themselves are like just every time though. Yep. It's just unbelievable. So let's, I'll, I'll, we will follow this story closely about the two fighting umpires. Though. I, want to, I, want to, I want to see what it was all about and see if they get suspended. Will they get suspended? Oh, I think they are. I think they, uh, will, well, they, they will be, I guess, from now Once on. Once this probe gets underway. Yeah. Um, another thing is it seems to be we're only a, we're about a fortnight away from Port Adelaide playing the Gold Coast in China. Did you see they've already started promos for it on Fox Footy? Oh, have they? I and they've got, all, they've got players from both clubs speaking Chinese. You're kidding me. No, it's, it's, I can't remember what the phrase is, but it's the standard... Um, Mandarin or Ni Hao or something. It's Ni Hao, uh, hello or or welcome or something. Right. And they've got players from both clubs doing it. None of the players are um, bilingual, actually, like Kevin Rudd style, just rapper. <laughs> didn't appear to be that familiar with it. I mean, they could a have lot got, of them struggling I, with English. I'm surprised they didn't get Lin Jong across <laughs> to to help them out. But, but I mean, as you say, most of them struggle with English. But and. They just look so uncomfortable looking down the barrel of the camera. I'm just speaking g- Chinese. It, I, it's appallingly bad. I the was whole thing. Speaking to someone uh, at who's going over there, um, who, who works for one of the media organisations, and we we were having a laugh about what are the odds that we get through this without a racist incident? <laughs> Or I read or a cultural or a cultural. There'll be something that would go wrong. Yeah. But I also read yesterday that apparently quite a few AFL executives are already quite on the ground in Shanghai, making sure this goes well. But the, the well, what I've what heard a it, across but... media, AFL, and the clubs is, uh, except for Port Adelaide, of course, is that this has been a, a logistical nightmare. Oh, of course. Getting it would visas, be. getting everything organised, it's cost. Uh, Seven a lot of money. It's cost the AFL a lot of yeah. money. I've heard a few people say it's not happen- going to happen again because it's just not. It's oh. just a huge exercise for not a lot of upside. Most of the ten thousand that have sold are either expats or they're Port Adelaide taking a bunch of. They put on yeah. packages to take a bunch of people. Oh, over they'll there. be just handing so it's not tickets like, out. Yeah, it's not the like streets it's gonna, of Shanghai. Well, it's sold out, but yeah. it's only you know. And so, uh, who knows? I mean, we can't win over New Zealand. We're going to win over China. Oh, exactly. I uh, and. 
But you really hope there's maybe an incident on a plane just out of Hong Kong. <laughs> 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 well, remember when Melbourne went to China, what a disaster oh, that, that was. was. That was appalling. Apparently all the Melbourne players were just on, Drunk the, on, on the grog the they entire time. Could Tom feel... Scully reckons that was half the reason he left Melbourne. Yeah, because they he were took throwing. It up. Someone threw up on him, didn't he? And yeah. then they um, and then they also um, and then they they him. only played sixteen aside because most of, a lot of the players were so hungover they couldn't yeah. get up for it. And it, it's hot. And it was basically uh, Liberatore's trip to Vietnam. <laughs> Just Apparently, when uh, Liberatore did that trip to Vietnam, uh, everyone talks about how he played for the Vietnam Swans. Uh, yes, it, but I, I was told by someone who was there and said it was. So, so I saw someone who was at that game yeah. in Vietnam when right. Libertori played and shaved his head, remember? That yeah. crazy shaving his head. And he actually played for Laos. Right. So there was Laos It wasn't the Vietnam. Vietnam Swans. Well, they were playing the Vietnam Swans and I got told he played for Laos. But anyway, um, these there's, there's a group of these people who were all at that match and they were telling me, you know, it was end of season, they were all yeah, over there doing barney, something. Yeah. So they are all drinking and no one was taking anything seriously. And then... Uh, Liberatore goes, oh, I'll play, you know, and he's drunk and he goes, oh, I'll play and they're all laughing and so he, he went into the ruck because, right? <laughs> you know, he's a lot he better than everyone else and they're thinking, oh, this will be funny but you like, you shouldn't do it but this will be funny. Anyway, I said, oh, and did he, so he just even stuffing around, he was, they said, oh, Bit and he was just player. way better than everyone else and I said, oh, even though he was just stuffing around, he was way better than everyone else and they go, oh, nah. He went really hard. He wasn't stuffing around. He went, so apparently that game, he was not half-assing it at all. He was full, like, almost, not quite an AFL he's intensity, a but he was like... So he's anyway, a strange cat. Um, I, it, someone can correct me, but I, I'm told he played for Laos, not for Vietnam. Okay. So, it, not that it makes a huge difference. Oh, 30, but, 40 years ago, there wasn't a lot of love lost between Laos and Vietnam, was there? No, but I think the fact that this has been played basically between... Expats. Pissed Australians, yeah. yeah, it didn't really matter. The names didn't yeah. really matter. There wasn't a lot of cultural baggage <laughs> <laughs> being brought along. Um, anyway, you're talking about Melbourne. The Melbourne United in the NBL, <gasps> they're going to play a game in China um, three days after the AFL clash between Port Adelaide yeah. and Gold Coast in Shanghai. They're going to play a friendly game against the Chinese Basketball Association Club uh, Jiangsu Dragons in Nanjing on May 17. I reckon there'd be a lot of Chinese teams called the Dragons. Just a few? Yeah, I reckon there would be. <laughs> they might be the relocated, what was it, Southeast Melbourne Dragons. Remember, they the, lasted about five minutes. Was that, South Melbourne Dragons? Yeah, it was that after the Southeast that Melbourne Hill, Magic. Hill, yeah, 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 that was that, they were around for Because I think, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Brian Gorgian, who used to coach the Boomers, he's now coaching in, in China, China. is he? Very successfully, I think. I might be wrong here, but I think this might be his team, the, the Jiangsu Dragons. Ah, right. Well, anyway. They're, they're, it's they're, they're, now, the, the, the difference in this is China is basketball mad, apparently. They are. They so are. that actually oh, makes this, this more be huge. sense. Yeah. Uh, th- this makes perfect sense because I know um, the NBL are, are hoping to uh, forge some stronger ties with China for that very reason because yeah. Chinese basketball is just massive. Whereas Chinese AFL, I think, is still in its infancy. Despite, <laughs> you think it's still in its infancy? Despite the port and the, the gold I don't coast. even think uh, it has been, been consummated yeah, It hasn't been conceived yet. <laughs> but they're playing in, in fact, Nanjing. they're just not that into us. No, no, not at all. Uh, so anyway, that's they're going over there too. So everyone's going to if China. If Melbourne United win this game and win it easily, will they call it the Nanjing Massacre? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the – and now we have the culturally insignificant, the insensitive moment. Yeah, well, that was, for those who don't know, that was in 1938 when Japanese troops murdered about 300,000 Chinese in Nanjing. Yeah, they remember that not too fondly. Uh, There's a few issues still between. <laughs> now, uh, Serge, we don't usually cover off motor racing that much. No, uh, no, we don't touch on motor racing that often at all. But we do when they give us this sort of story. Um They've supercars in the supercars. The uh, had to wa- they've had to warn the teams uh, to stop dobbing in their uh, to stop basically dobbing in their, their the opponents. other teams, their opponents, uh, because there's, there's always a blues in the supercars. Yeah, but this is this takes it to another level, right? So they had the Phillip Island 500, yep. which I, I know you were down at, yep. um, and it was plunged into farcical scenes. Um, 
after uh, eight cars were slapped with race ruining penalties for crossing a pit lane line that had never been previously policed. So hang so on, there's a rule that had never been policed. Can't go over a certain line. No one ever paid any attention to and it. And they've all had their races ruined. And a whole by bunch the of them had all been whipped. Now what happened was, um, they suddenly got um, one one of the guys who was um, uh, who did it. They got a the the people running it uh, the the race. Uh, they got an email sent from a team that alerted race control that driver uh, Scott McLaughlin had made a breach and he was currently vying for victory. And he made a breach so of this emailed, rule that had never... Yeah. So they have a system, which is a local area network system, a land system uh, for the race, a race yeah. land they call it. Um, so on that someone sends, which in real time they can alert uh, things that are happening to yeah. the race control. So one of them... It's during the race. Yeah, during the yeah, race. Right. Because it goes on forever. They alert the race because oh, this guy's done that. So uh, he was actually going for the the um, he was actually going for victory. But so because they got this email, they checked it and they slapped him with a pit lane penalty that robbed him of winning. Right. right. So naturally, one team's decided they dob him in and he gets rubbed out. <laughs> Race control then uh, immediately after they'd done that, race control received more than 80 emails <laughs> from every team pointing out breaches of every other team. So, so the drivers are roaring around the yeah. track. And, and the team's are all on and, email. And the, blo- the bloke who's r- running the team <laughs> is on his phone t- sending dobbing an email in dobbing in the next team. Yeah. Oh, and fantastic. then once that happens and he actually gets penalised, 80 emails flood in. For all the teams just go, right, if that's going to be the way, we're going to start dobbing on each other. Oh. Here we go. So they get flooded um, and it means that there was all these breaches, breaches and eight cars were stung from all these complaints and basically got rolled out. Um, Did they get a winner eventually? Or? I think someone won. Someone who didn't. <laughs> Somebody who's, who's Telstra was down. His yeah. Wi-Fi was down. <laughs> so that's why it's, it's, it reminds me a bit like working at an office and suddenly everyone, someone CCs in passively aggressively like the boss yeah. and goes, I wasn't happy with the way you responded to me on this. And it's who they CC in. Yeah. It's a bit like that. Like they walk, It's really even in the fastest sport in the world, it comes down to basic admin and office etiquette. <laughs> so they got 80 emails that all came through um, and there was all this... Uh, and you can see the bloke in charge of the race. Before, right? he's, he's, he's trying to answer one at a time on his phone. Reply <laughs> he's, all. He's going, Jesus, I've got 78 more to get through. <laughs> oh. um, so uh, they've now come out and warned all the club supercars have uh, sent a memo out to teams warning them that they're only allowed to use the system for matters relating to their own team. Oh, okay. So the... So you can say, oh, we've got an issue here or there's, or there's a safety issue or something like okay. that, you can say. So that's what they're allowed to use it for, but no more dobbing in other oh, I people. just love the fact that, you know, in a sport where blokes are driving cars at 250 k's an hour, you can be dobbed in by a bloke in the next car. Well, no, it's not the next car. I know, it's, 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 teams, it's, it's, it's his boss in the back yeah, in the, the pit. pits. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I just love that. Well, I love how just instantly everyone's, like, the, the loyalty... Amongst friends, just went in like. Oh, see, you know, you see, in these supercars, occasionally, if drivers have, have, have pinged into each other, and they're yeah. not happy about, at the end of the race, they'll start punching on, which is always great when they're both wearing helmets. That's right. But but <laughs> but, but now it's That's gone the to a new level. To get in a fight. Yeah, <laughs> you're more likely to break a hand. Yeah, uh, as you go along. Um, so we should mention, Serge, we've done it again, which we do. I think we do this now. I was going to say we must do this now almost uh, it's monthly. All, yeah. It's a bit of a tradition of ours where we forget to announce who won the yeah. question of the week on the podcast earlier. Yeah, well, we actually were doing it deliberately now just to... I wish to, we were doing just, it Just to annoy people. Um, but we did. We forgot again on Tuesday, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, so I'm just bringing up so we can... Um, I should have had this ready earlier, but I was just... Well, I think I know who I want to win this from Tuesday. I can't remember his name. We'll, we'll bring it up. But, right. But I reckon I know the question that I really like. And what from was Tuesday. the question? The question... Oh, I can't even remember. It was to do with North Korea. Yeah, I had that one too. Um, so the question that we liked um, yeah. was Gavin McDonnell... Uh, around Joe Danaher, who would win a shootout between Joe Danaher and North Korea? Yeah, that so was congratulations, question Gavin. Question of the week, Gav. Um, I sent out a bunch of uh, T-shirts. Now, um, 
If anyone, uh, I've missed anyone in the who won a thing, and I can go back and check. So don't say, don't email me if you um. <laughs> so so you you owe me eight t shirts. Yeah, because I can go back and check. But I think I've got most people. But if there's anyone I haven't got one out to yet, uh, just let me know because um we're well I just sent out a bunch. So I think most people should be receiving them who have won them. We do actually send them out. It's not a myth. It, it actually does happen. Trust um, me, I've seen him do it. Uh, It'd be interesting. They're all talking about Joe Danaher's body language all week, and I'm like, is there anything less? Like, what a not. That's another non-story. I mean, his kicking was a story because it completely changed the context of the game, and he's got a history of it. But hugging but, Michael Hibbard really didn't affect the the was, result. I wouldn't have thought. Oh, it's his old teammate for Christ's sake. He played well, just can't kick straight. Yeah, That's yeah. nothing to do with body. That was no. bo- his problem with his body language is his foot, <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that he's six foot eight is that you could. His body language stands out more every time he does something. Yeah. So I think his real problem is his moustache. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit if porn you, star. If you've been going five years and that's all you can grow. And, but to be fair, when he was hugging Michael Hibbard, Hibbard's moustache didn't look all that flash no, either. No, not been good either. All right. Well, we'll um, we're back on Monday. We will. Uh, Big we'll, weekend of footy coming up. Yeah. What's the game of the round to you? I was oh, looking at this before. Melbourne Hawthorne. <laughs> when was the last time we were pr- favourites against Hawthorne? Oh, never? No, exactly. Although, look at us sitting in the eighth and them in uh, 17th. Um, who's, yeah. who's regretting the merger now? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's been a mess. Um, I think the. I, I, St Kilda GWS tonight's actually an okay game. That would be a good game to watch. Collingwood Carlton is no longer a blockbuster. No. I mean, anyone that says it is is living in the past. Yeah. Edge. Um, it's a, there's not that many great games. Like Bulldogs Richmond, it. yeah. Yeah, Bulldogs Richmond is probably, if, and especially because it's either going to be Richmond prove everyone that last week was a one-off, or it's going to prove that that they're pretenders yet again. <laughs> yet yeah. again. So we'll see. Uh, so we'll be back Monday. We will. It's only a few days away, so we'll uh, we'll see you then.